Okay. Welcome back to today's anatomy question. I am Lizzie Lassiter. Teaching us today is the fearless Mary Richards. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lizzie. Thank you so much for joining us again on our adventures. You can find everything here, experientialanatomy.yoga. That's our website for our free newsletter. Go there, sign up, and you'll get notified when we post new videos. Two more things I want to show you. The first is Mary's website, yogawithmaryrichards.com. You can go there and sign up for Mary's newsletter or click through to her social media. And I want to show Mary's book. Mary has just published the book, Teach People Not Poses. You can order it now wherever you find books. I'll put a link below this video on YouTube. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you so much, Lizzie. Today, we're talking about the knees, Yes, which are potentially... They're your favorite joint. They're my favorite joint. Because? Because they're so complex and they're vexing for many people, myself included. Exactly. I was going to say potentially problematic joints. If you live long enough, you're going to experience some knee trouble probably. So in yoga, when we're on the yoga mat today, we want to talk about the bony landmarks of the knees. So what can we see in our students? What can we see in ourselves when we look in the mirror or when we look down while we're practicing? What do we need to know to understand the structure of the knee, Mary? Oh, yes. And so knees, again, they they really are like my favorite. Um, <laughs> I have favorite joints. I have a favorite muscle, you know, um, but so knees are the crossroads of the lower extremity. Knees are like the arjuna of the body. They don't want to fight. They want everyone to get along, you know, but all of the forces from the ground that go through our feet and ankles cross through our knees on their way to the hips and the vertebral column. All, what happens in your lower extremity happens in your neck. Okay. Yeah. And then so many of our forces from our movement generated forces from the pelvis go down through the, you know, from the hips, through the knees, down to the feet. So they really are a crossroads in the body. And the fascinating thing about the knees is, you know, they're often described as a, as a hinge joint. And while hinging, flexion, bending, and extension, straightening the knees are their primary movements. What a lot of folks don't realize is that in the initial phases of both flexion and extension, there's a rotation component. And all of the, like, if you look inside a knee, <laughs> you know, the, the cruciate ligaments, cruciate means cross. Like the way the tissues are structured in the knees are like crossroads fascinating how the form reflects the function mm, okay I'm going to stand up and give us a close-up view so we can look at the knees while Mary mm. talks us through what we need to know about the knee okay so uh step back just about six inches Lizzie about a foot length or so half a foot length yeah great okay so when we're looking at our knees uh the first thing I want you to notice is which direction do your knees seem to angle in relationship to one another? For instance, do your knees move toward one another, toward the midline of the body? Or do the knees move away from the midline of the body? Yours I'd are say they're, they're turned in a tiny bit. Okay, so that's normal. I love that you brought that up. Okay, so um, let's get to that because that's patellar position. Okay, kneecap position and what you're describing that they turn in slightly, normal alert. Guess what? <laughs> Your kneecaps don't face directly forward unless you're bow-legged. If your knees are diverging laterally, if they're moving, if they're structurally, your knees are bowing out from the midline, your kneecaps are going to point directly forward. But the more our knees knock toward one another or move toward the midline. And that's the way the thigh bone and the shin bone come together. We don't, we can't really change our structure. That's why it's important to look at the knee relationship to the midline. If you're, the more your knees come in toward the midline, the more your kneecaps are gonna look toward one another. So Lizzie, place your fingertips on your kneecaps again, please. 
Yes. So hold your fingertips there and you can feel that they're, they're glancing toward one another. Yes. Your kneecaps. Yeah. Yes. And let me ask you, do you notice with your fingertips, go ahead and glide your fingertips up and down along your kneecaps. Kneecap is like a shield. Mm -hmm. It actually functions as a fulcrum. It is the structure that allows us to bend and straighten our legs. It gives us something to push against, if you will, when we're trying to straighten our legs. Mm -hmm. Do you notice, does one kneecap turn out a little more than the other? You know, I couldn't say. Okay. Some folks, one kneecap will turn out a little more than the other. Mm -hmm. That's normal. I just want you to be aware of it for yourself because symmetry is an illusion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but generally speaking, the kneecaps are oriented in approximately the same position. And that's what we're looking for is how close are we to symmetry? So normal for the kneecaps to glance toward one another, especially for folks with a, a uterus. <laughs> because of an obstetric pelvis, because when mm -hmm. we have a uterus, uh, or if we've had one in our life cycle, not, you know, mine's been removed, um, <laughs> then we're tended, our tendency is to be more knock kneed. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, you know, it's just obstetric structure. Okay. Um, so we're just going to see that more in folks with a uterus and some folks, even with their feet apart, when they stand, their knees touch. Mm -hmm. This isn't because your inner knees are fat, my friends. Mm -hmm. It's because your medial femoral condyles, go ahead, Lizzie, and touch your inner knees. And do you feel a, do you feel a bony knob there? Yes. Okay. That's called the medial femoral condyle. And mm -hmm. that is the end, the inner end of your thigh bone, the mm -hmm. medial distal end of your femur. Okay, now take your hands to your outer knees at about the same level and push in just a little bit. And do you feel a little knob on the outer knee? Yes, be a it's tender. Oh. It's a little bit, I went for a hike yesterday. It's a little bit tender. Yeah, so you're feeling your IT bands probably, yeah. Okay, yeah. so that's your lateral femoral condyle. Those are harder to find just because of the structure. When we're looking at our knees, when you look at your knees, Lizzie, do you think that one side, one aspect of your knee looks bigger than the other? I think the inside looks bigger. Exactly. Here. Exactly. The medial femoral condyle, which you were just touching, is much larger than the lateral femoral condyle. And now if you take your hands to your inner knees again and feel down below that inner knob, go down toward the leg, you feel another bony structure? Mm hmm Okay, mm -hmm. and now you're feeling your medial tibial plateau. So this is the top Ooh. of your shin bone. The yeah. Proximal top of your shin bone. Okay. And that medial femoral condyle is sitting in that little cave. Mm -hmm. You can feel it as you bend, as you flex and straighten, you can feel how they work together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So now feel the outsides of your thighs and legs again. So work down and you'll feel another bump just on the outer le lower leg. You feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's the proximal head of your fibula. That strut-like bone on your outer lower leg, it has nothing to do with your knee joint, by the way. Ah, okay. But people will feel that and think that that's part of their knee. Mm -hmm. But if you feel a forward of it, if you touch the top of the fibula again, and then work your fingers toward the front of your legs. Okay. You feel how you kind of dropped off the top of that bone and then you came onto another bone? Mm-hmm. That's your tibia. And now I see you rubbing the fronts of your shin bones. What do you feel under your thumbs right now? This feels like a bone. And then there's like a divot here before the. Yes. Knee. You feel a knot there. A, a yeah. little, that's called the tibial tuberosity. And that's a little knob on the front of your shin bone. And that's where your quadricep tendons cross over your knee and attach to the shin bone. Mm. Okay. And so it's very important to know if you put your fingers on those tibial tuberosities again, Lizzie. Okay. So what do you notice about your tibial tuberosities? Feel those and then feel your kneecaps again. And let me know, are they pointing in the same direction? No. 
Yes, exactly. So your tibial tuberosities are pointed directly forward, yes? Yes. Okay. And then your kneecaps turn in just slightly. Yes. Totally normal. <laughs> totally normal. And this is because that medial aspect of the knee is much larger in terms of the bony structure. And it's also the major functional compartment of the knee. Most of the knee action happens on that inner side of the knee. Mm, okay. And so we want to know like, which way are my kneecaps sitting in the joint when I'm standing in mountain pose? How do they relate to my tibial tuberosities? Because for some folks, their tibial tuberosities may point out slightly, especially if they played um, football or American soccer. Mm -hmm. Okay, because some of us, especially if we did a lot of running and kicking sports when we were younger, we have our bones, bones grow along lines of strain. So if you did a lot of running and the like as a kid, it's possible that your tibial tuberosities will be turned out just a little bit more. That's okay. That's okay. It just, just something to be aware of because you're going to be, need to be really mindful of that inner knee compartment. Mm hmm. And I have heard that like the inner knee is where most knee injury happens. So that's yes. where we should be careful if we start to feel discomfort in the inner knee. That's kind of like a bigger red flag as opposed to the outer knee is more like IT band stuff. Usually. Exactly. Some folks will have lateral meniscus injury, you know, the C shaped uh, cartilage that slots in uh, the head of the tibia and the uh, it cushions the end of the femur. Some folks will have lateral meniscal injury, but the big place is medial meniscus, anterior cruciate ligament, and medial collateral ligament. The medial collateral ligament it serves as like this riverbank for the inner knee and keeps us from going in too far this way, right? And so uh, what happens, you've heard of the pose Bacassana frog pose? Yes. The devil yes, yes, pose yes. for knees. <laughs> it's like you're lying on your belly, you bend your knees, you take a hold of the tops of your feet and you press them down towards the floor. Towards your outer hips. Yes. Yeah. So what do you think that does to your inner knee? Yeah. You're torquing it like crazy. So I don't teach that pose. I don't care how bendy you are. I don't teach that mm -hmm. pose. That's not how you improve function in your anterior and posterior collateral ligaments or your medial and lateral collateral ligaments. That's not how you do it. There are other ways to do it. And like in uh, Virasana, in hero's pose, you know, a lot of us have been taught to sit between our feet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with our knees for, face, you know, held together and facing directly forward. Too much pressure. Mm -hmm in that inner knee mm -hmm. and we want to protect that. And in Padmasana, in Lotus pose, you know, this is why it's so important when we are getting ready to practice Lotus pose that we actually do a lot of hip stretching first because it's not so much the knee in that pose, it comes from the hips, right? And the knee though, it pays the price for any restrictions in hip and folks will get all jammed up in that inner aspect of the knee. And, you know, there's just, that doesn't serve anyone or anything. So mm. it's really important that we look at, that we also not do things like try to turn our shin bones out and our thigh bones in, keep your bones together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last question before we close today, Mary, in terms of looking at other people's knees, mm -hmm. what are a couple things that yoga teachers need to know? One, maybe, or a couple things that yoga teachers can kind of be looking for in our students when we focus it on their knee. The most important thing, in my opinion, is, is the person knock kneed bow-legged or straight-legged, meaning, you know, their legs look very vertically aligned or are they bow-legged, the knees are bulging out away from the midline or are they knock-kneed and the knees are moving in toward one another. That's the most important thing because that's going to inform how we instruct 
standing postures in particular. You know, for instance, someone who is not need, okay, we want to make sure that when they're in warrior pose, for instance, let's say warrior two or even warrior one, we want to make sure that they're not turning their feet in to follow their knees. If they're knock need, we want to make sure they turn their foot out just slightly about a big toe width. And again, remember in the foot video, we talked about the central pillar of stability in the feet. The key is that the center of our kneecap is bisected by the space between the second and third toes. So for someone who's knock need, they're going to need to push out toward the little toe side of their foot so that they can align the center of their kneecap between the second and third toes. But for someone who's bow legged at the knees, they're going to have to push in because see, they're already moving out. Mm. So we want to make sure we identify the center of the, of the kneecap and see, especially when we come into flexion, the cent the kneecap then is going to face forward because the inner knee, the medial knee moves forward. Mm. Okay. Okay. And, okay. Does this all make sense? So this is the key. This is what we want to know. Which direction are the person's, what's the relationship between the person's knees and the midline? Mm -hmm. And how big is that medial aspect of the knee? Because some folks have really huge medial femoral condyles. I'm in that club. Um, and you know, it's not because their knees are fat. Okay. <laughs> this sounds like the best like yoga anatomy pickup line ever. Like, hey baby, you've got some big medial femoral condyle. That's a large functional compartment in the knee. <laughs> anatomy nerdery. <laughs> I'm going to show you the websites again. You're going to go to yoga with Mary Richards.com if you want to find more of this delectable humor from Ms. Mary Richards. And hopefully you are immediately going to go to experientialanatomy.yoga and make sure that you're on our free newsletter list. Thank you so much, Mary Richards. My pleasure, Lizzie. <laughs>